Power stations. You need to know about lots of different ways of generating electricity. The good thing is they all work in a very similar way. Almost all of them work just by spinning a generator. It's just the way you make that generator spin that is different. Let's look at the non-renewables first. These will one day all run out. So here's a coal-fired power station. On the left we see a boiler. This is where we burn the coal, transferring its chemical energy to heat energy. We then use that heat to boil water and turn it into steam. In fact, in the next three examples, we will still just be turning water into steam. The kinetic energy of this steam then turns a turbine, and the kinetic energy of the turbine then turns a generator, which transfers the kinetic energy into electrical energy. It's that simple. But there are some bad things here. If we look at the chimney, we see lots of CO2s and SO2s leaving. CO2, as we know, is linked to global warming, and SO2 can cause acid rain. So really bad pollutant gases leaving here. Well, could we burn anything else? Well, we could burn organic matter or biomass, like old peanut shells or olive stones. Now this is much better than coal because it's never going to run out. We have a constant supply of organic matter that we could burn. We also see that there's no CO2 or SO2 leaving the chimney now, so it's much better. I'd just like to point out quickly that the big towers on the right, with steam billowing out the top of them, are just cooling towers. They're just taking our super hot steam and cooling it back down to water to be heated again. So when you see those, don't think that that's bad gases coming off the top. It's essentially just fluffy clouds leaving. Now let's look at a nuclear power station. You can see here the only difference is we replace the boiler with a nuclear reactor. And now, again, no more SO2 or CO2, no pollutant gases. However, we do get radioactive waste, which is a bit nasty and difficult to dispose of. Also, if there's an accident, it can be a bit bad. Again, though, it's non-renewable, as although uranium's in plentiful supply, it will one day run out. Now let's look at the renewables in earnest. If you live in a volcanic area, you could replace the boiler with pipes and send water down onto the hot rocks to create steam. As you can see again, no pollutant gases, but you do have to be in a volcanic area for this to work, so it doesn't work for everybody. A really easy way to turn the generator is wind power. Just slap some blades on and away you go. A wind turbine. Great, as again, no pollutant gases, and the energy source, the wind, will never run out. Although you do need to be somewhere really windy for this to work, and some people think they're ugly and a bit noisy. What about a hydroelectric power station? We could dam a river and then use the energy of the falling water to turn our turbine and generator. Again, it's great as there's no pollutant gases and it's also renewable. But you do have to flood a really large area and that could be people's homes and also animals' habitats. Tidal energy is another great form of energy. In certain places, we can build something similar to a wind turbine, but underwater. And when the tide comes in and out, the kinetic energy of the water turns the generator. But this only happens twice a day. So if you need extra energy, you can't get it. Again, though, it's really good as it will never run out and there's no pollutant gases. Another form of energy using the water would be wave energy. We use a long snake to turn the up and down motion of the sea into a round and round in a turbine and a generator. Again, it's really good. There's no pollutant gases and it's renewable, but there could be effects on local habitats. Finally, solar energy. And this is the only one that doesn't turn a generator. In this case, photochemical cells turn the energy from the sun directly into electricity. Now, this is great if you're in a lovely sunny country, but probably not so great in cloudy Manchester. And that's it for power stations. Make sure you learn the benefits and disadvantages of each one and also the basic energy transfers that are taking place as well.